Well, this is the last of our series, The Other Side of Faith. So what is The Other Side of Faith? Say me. Yeah, you are. Because God works in the earth realm with you. And it's you and God together. And together you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I'm sure is dear to your heart. It's called Someone Wants Your Money. <laughs> That's true. The, the devil doesn't want you to have your money. Let me just say that right now. He doesn't want you to have any money at all. And there are schemes and tactics in the earth realm. Again, this is the other side of faith, your part. There are tactics and schemes in place that you never have money. And you have to learn about that. So today I'm going to help you with that. Is that fair? Good enough? I call it the five-year path to slavery. A young couple has all kinds of ideas as they get married. You know, they're planning their wedding and they're, they're going to, you know, do all these great things with their life. They get married. They buy two new cars. They buy a house. They buy all the furnishings. They, in five years, and I've done this for a long time, in five years, they don't have options. There are no more dreams because now their dream is to make the mortgage payment by the end of the month. And now the stay-at-home mom that had dreamt of raising kids is now having to work and let someone else raise the kids. And the, the part-time job the husband had in college now becomes his full-time job because although he didn't want to be in that field, his degrees in another field, now he's in this part-time job field because he had to have a paycheck and he finds himself stuck there. Now, the ushers will pass tissues out in just a minute. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree that's how it is, though? For a lot of people, that's how it is. So we have to talk about this today, and it's the other side of faith, and your knowledge on this side will help you win in life. When Drinda and I first got married, of course, we did the same thing, five-year path to slavery, found ourselves in a few years totally maxed out. I was in sales, so obviously a salesperson's optimistic, and you think that next week will be better than last week, right? And so the money you didn't have last week, you borrow thinking you'll pay it off when the big case comes or the client comes or whatever happens to the business. And it doesn't quite happen that way. And you begin to bury yourself in debt. And so that's how we found ourselves in debt. As you know, our story, being in debt for a long time, we had, you name it, we had it. IRS liens, credit cards, 10 maxed out credit cards, three finance company loans that were always late. You know, like I said, mortgages owed our relatives thousands of dollars, owed the dry cleaner, the dentist, you name it. We owed everyone that would allow us to owe them. <laughs> and so there was not a good way of living. Nine years like that is not fun. And basically it came to the end of everything. We're out of everything. And I won't take time to tell you the story today, but we got pawned everything we could pawn, sold everything we could sell. Attorneys lined up to file suit and desperately crying out to God. And God spoke to us and said, I had nothing to do with this. Because a lot of Christians blame God for stuff like that. I don't know why God's not. He said, I had nothing to do with this. He said, you did it. He said, but you have never learned how my kingdom operates is why you're in this mess. So he also said this. I, I don't usually, I mean, I, I tell that part, but he also added this part. He said, my people, the church, are like Israel was in Pharaoh's day in Egypt, enslaved, they exchanged all their labor in exchange for the food they ate and a place to stay. And all the profit went to Pharaoh, correct? He said, my church is just like that. They're enslaved financially. They're not free. He says, I want my people free. That's what he told me. Of course, we weren't free when he said that to me. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 7. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Definition of a slave is someone who is legally owned by another person and is forced to work for that person. And you would say, well, I'm not a slave. You know, that's, I mean, you know, I, I just, I'm not a slave. Well, let's talk about it. Slaves have no options. They show up at 8 o'clock, leave at 5 o'clock, take vacation for two weeks when they're told they can, retire. When, no, I'm sorry, that's, that's a different system. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit of their labor goes to someone else in envelopes every month. Oh, the slave is making profit. It just goes to the owner, the master. Slaves don't own anything. They show up, as I said, when the master says, show up. Are we slaves? We live in houses we don't own. We drive cars we don't own. We wear clothes we bought on a Visa card. On sale, of course. That helps. <laughs> Furnish our homes with debt. Send our kids to school loans. 
buy our groceries on Visa cards. We are slaves. If you don't believe me, stop making your payments, and the legal rightful owner will show up to claim their property. It gets better. Just trust me. Someone wants your money. To begin your journey of freedom, which is vital to God, he wants you free. You need to know that someone wants you in debt. The system is geared against you. You need to understand that. Of course, you probably figured that out. Bankers don't tell you how to save on interest. The IRS doesn't send you letters how to save taxes. All of the marketing schemes on television or radio is geared for you to spend money, to desire something you didn't think about the day before, but now you have to have. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, New American Standard Version, Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves, Therefore, be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. You're going to have to be pretty shrewd in today's climate. How many received a credit card offer in the mail this week? How many received more than one? How many received more than one in one day? I've had as many as 15 in one day before. I get at least three to four every day. And there are 4 billion credit card offers mailed out last year here in the United States. That is not the record. 2006 was the record. 8.1 billion, with a B, credit card offers were mailed out to U.S. citizens. 8.1 billion. Now, that must cost something. When you think, those, they've got pretty elaborate little deals going on in those envelopes. I mean, I'm going to guess 50 cents a piece. It's a lot of money to spend. And how many have received a credit card offer in the mail that you refuse to, to take advantage of, but they keep sending it to you? Every month, same credit card offer. You think, don't you, have you ever thought, why do they do this? I have not said I want this. And they keep doing it over and over again, right? They're waiting patiently for pressure for you to bite. Think of fishing. They're just going to wait patiently, and you're going to find out it's very profitable that they do. The average interest rate averaged of all active cards in the U.S. today is 21.07%. So that's pretty good. The average credit card balance in a family that has active credit cards is $16,880 in the United States. There's over a trillion dollars on credit cards in the nation. I don't know about you, but I'd like to have a trillion dollars on deposit at 21.07%. You can quit your day job with that. <laughs> credit cards take 22 years to pay off if you pay the minimum payment. And, of course, if you never use it again, which is obviously you're not going to do that. You'll use it again, right? What are banks paying in a, in a savings account, interest rate-wise? Help me out. 1%? I heard Rod's voice. 1%. What about CD rate? Maybe 2, 2.5 two at the high, 2, right? So... Banks have found a way to invest money at 21.07% and pay two. Of course, they have expenses. I understand that. But at 21.07%, the power of compound interest is like the eighth wonder of the world. No, I'm serious. It should be the, could be the, the first. It could be number one, actually, in my, in my book. $25 a month at 21.07% over 50 years. You're age 20. Now you're age 70. You're working lifetime would grow to $48 million, $25 a month. $1 a month, anyone can spare $1 a month, $1.8 million. The price, you've heard this ad, the price is simply the cost of a cup of coffee a day, right? You ever heard that? Come on, come on, you ever heard that? Like it's free, right? They know the value of a dollar at 21%. You know, two or $3 a month, hey, we'll take it. They understand how money works. You need to know how money works, right? Just say yes. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.